If you have ever watched ketchup pouring from a bottle, you have seen fluid in motion. You can easily observe fluids such as water flowing out of a tap, milk or juice being poured into a glass, or ketchup oozing from a bottle. Your body contains many fluids such as blood and the watery cytoplasm inside cells. It is more difficult to imagine gases flowing, but they do. Take a deep breath. What happened? Some of the air that surrounds you flowed into your lungs when your lungs and rib cage expanded. Carbon dioxide flows out of your lungs when you exhale. Like liquids, gases flow and take up space. Therefore, gases and liquids can both be classified as fluids. Can any solids be classified as fluids? Breakfast cereal seems to flow when you pour them out of the box. Is cereal a fluid? You pour powdered laundry detergent into a washing machine. Is the detergent a fluid? In this unit, you will explore the properties of fluids. These properties can help you determine which substances are fluids and how fluids can be used to perform work. The properties of fluids can be explained by looking at tiny particles of matter. In further studies, you will be learning about atoms and molecules. These atoms and molecules are believed to be the particles of which materials are made. In earlier studies, you learned about the particle model of matter. In this unit, you will revisit the model and use it to help explain the properties of fluids. The essentials of life, food, water, and air, are examples of substances that occur in the three different states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, as you learned in earlier science studies. Solid is the state of matter of a substance that has a definite shape and volume, for example, a sugar cube. Liquid is the state of matter of a substance that has a definite volume, but no definite shape. For example, water. Gas is the state of matter of a substance that has neither a definite shape nor a definite volume. For example, oxygen. By using the particle model, you can explain why liquids and gases flow, but solids do not. Viewing matter as particles helps explain the behavior of solids, liquids, and gases. Solids are made up of particles that are tightly packed together. The particles of a solid are so close together, they cannot move around freely. They can only vibrate. This way of thinking about the particles of a solid can explain why solids are greatly affected by gravity. A solid will tumble toward the lowest surface when suspended in the air and then drop. Many solids can be ground into small pieces so they can slip past each other when they are poured out of their containers. Sugar, salt, flour, powdered cleansers and detergents, and many other crystals and powders are examples of solids that can be poured. However, according to the particle model, each tiny fragment of these solids contains billions of even smaller particles that are tightly packed together. Each tiny fragment is like a miniature solid in itself. Solids form a pile when they are poured and they do not keep flowing apart from each other. Even though solids are not true fluids, they can be transported and poured like fluids. The particles that make up liquids have enough energy to pull away from each other. Particles in liquids slide around each other while at the same time vibrating close together in small clusters. Imagine groups of guests talking and dancing at a party. The party guests can move around by shifting as a group or by flowing in between the other groups of partygoers. Similarly, liquid particles can slip past each other. Unlike the particles in solids, 
they do not form rigid clumps. As a result, the particles of a liquid cannot hold their shape. Instead, they fill a container and take the shape of that container. Liquid particles are so tightly packed together that they are easily affected by the downward pull of gravity. Liquids always flow to the lowest possible level, like water flowing over a waterfall. As well, liquids form a level surface when they are at rest. All liquids can be transformed into their gaseous state when the liquids are heated. Many substances such as air are gases at room temperature. Gas particles are so far apart from each other that there is an enormous amount of empty space between them. Imagine that you and a friend are as far apart from each other as possible in a baseball stadium and no one else is there. This is similar to what it would be like to be a gas particle. In fact, most gases seem invisible because there is so much empty space. The particle model can be used to explain why gas particles flow past each other easily, move in every direction, and move extremely far apart. The gas particles spread out so much that in a brief time they fill up the space of an entire container or room. For this reason, gases, like liquids, take on the shape of the container in which they are sealed. However, most gases do not flow to the lowest possible level, as do liquids. Because gas particles are not clustered or packed tightly together, they move in all directions, sometimes against gravity, and remain suspended. Unlike liquids, when the lid is taken off a container of gas, the gas particles will start to spread apart again until they have filled the entire room or building. The particle model helps us to understand that gases always occupy all the space that they can fill, up, down, or sideways. As you may recall from earlier studies, all solids can become liquids through the process of melting. Melting is just one example of a change of state, which occurs when the physical state of a substance is transformed into another state. Vaporization, the change from a liquid to a gas, is another type of change of state. A change of state occurs when a substance is heated and the particles of the substance gain energy. If you were to cool the substance, the reverse changes of state would occur because the particles lose energy. The change from gas to liquid is called condensation. The change from liquid to solid is called freezing. Sublimation is an unusual change of state that occurs when either a solid turns into its gaseous state or a gas turns into a solid without becoming a liquid first. An example of sublimation occurs when dry ice is used for special effects at concerts. A chunk of frozen carbon dioxide, a solid, gains energy and gives off a thick cloud of fog, carbon dioxide gas. An example of a gas changing directly to a solid occurs when frost forms on windows on very cold days. Evaporation is a slower form of vaporization that occurs over a wide range of temperatures. A wet towel will dry even if the air temperature is cool. On a cool day, it will simply take longer for the water to evaporate from the towel. Boiling is a more rapid form of vaporization that occurs at a specific temperature called the boiling point. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius at sea level. Every substance has its own freezing point and melting point. The freezing point of water, for example, is zero degrees Celsius at sea level. This is the temperature at which liquid water freezes. It is also the temperature at which ice melts, its melting point. When normally solid substances are melted, the liquid can be poured into molds of various shapes. When the substance is cooled, 
it solidifies and takes the shape of the mold. The result can be a wax candle, a silver teapot, or many other products.